Hello. Today we're going to learn about modeling cloth and computer graphics. Let's get started. Before we get into the details, let's look at why we might want to model cloth. When we reference cloth modeling, what we're actually referring to is thin shell material models, which can include the motion of a variety of objects. These include clothing, folded paper, or blankets. Naturally, we can see that these objects are likely to appear in more complicated animation projects. First, let's take a look at what makes this problem different from other motion. The other common type of physics simulation is rigid bodies. This means that when one point in the object moves, all of the points move the same amount. Each object is rigid and transformations are applied to all vertices identically. Let's compare this to the movement of this cloth. Notice how when one point in the cloth moves, not all of the other points move the same amount. This is a key difference in the type of motion we are going to try to model. To get a better understanding of how we might model this motion, let's remind ourselves of an important physics formula known as Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law is important in describing the relationship between the force exerted on a spring given its displacement from rest. As you might expect, Hooke's Law suggests that the greater a spring's displacement from rest, the greater the force it exerts. Great, now let's see how we can use this to model cloth motion. We now have an expression for the net force on a single vertex. Notice how the second term came from Hooke's law as we sum over all the springs that are connected to the vertex. Let's see if this works. Hmm, that doesn't seem right. The horizontal and vertical springs can shear. Let's try adding some more springs. Now we have diagonal springs connecting all the vertices. Let's see if that helps. Well, that looks much better. To make things simpler to explain, our graphics are essentially two-dimensional. To make a cloth 3D, you would need to add additional springs, the ones in green, that control how much the cloth bends. Previously, we've been using k, our spring constant, as 10. Let's see what it looks like with other values of k. The spring constant k is how we can control the stiffness of our cloth. A higher spring constant, less stretching. It's kind of weird that the cloth just keeps going though. Let's add some damping. To add damping, we add a slight force in the opposite direction of each spring's velocity. In our last term, we compute the relative velocity between the vertex and each of its neighbors and multiply it by the damping factor, d. Okay, we have an expression for the force on the vertex. How do we actually apply this? If possible, we'd like to only keep track of each vertice's position. Verlet integration gives us this. We'll be using Verlet integration to update the system. This approximation is derived from Newton's laws and Euler's method for numerically solving differential equations. The key feature is that we don't need to keep track of or compute the velocity of each vertex. We just need the current position, the previous position, and the acceleration, which we can obtain from our previous expression for the net force. It works. The damping factor is another way we can control the cloth. The more damping we have, the less springy the cloth will be. Now let's talk about cloth interactions. This doesn't look right. We certainly don't want our cloth to self-intersect. To prevent this, we draw a small sphere around each of the vertices of our cloth. We don't care if a vertex's sphere intersects with one of its neighbors, since their interactions are already handled by the springs. However, if two spheres intersect that aren't neighbors of each other, 
We want to move each so that they are no longer colliding. That looks a lot better. Collisions with other objects can be implemented similarly. For example, a rigid sphere. Suppose that the smaller balls make up the cloth and the larger ball makes up the sphere. We can, as with the cloth self-collisions, simply move the cloth to its position before intersecting the sphere and set its velocity accordingly. Let's review the key takeaways from this cartoon. You have learned that we can simulate different materials by animating individual vertices instead of treating a whole mesh as rigid. You know how to animate individual vertices to create cloth by treating each vertex as if it were connected to its neighbors with springs. You have learned how to simulate cloth collisions. This is by no means the only way to simulate cloth but it is a simple way that is used in production level software like Blender. There are a few things that you may be wondering about that we haven't had time to touch on. How do we know which vertices should be connected? How would we model something like a pillow that is like a cloth but with thickness? And is there a better way to compute collisions? One that can handle high velocities, vertices that are far from each other, and collisions with small objects? These are things we don't have time to cover, but if you're curious, there's lots more to learn about this topic. Thank you for watching.